The name of the problem springs in series and parallel connection. In this problem, we have a system with two springs. Uh, the first one, the first I'm going to analyze the uh, case where the springs are connected in series. Here is the first spring with spring constant k1, which is connected to a second spring with a spring constant k2, and that is connected to mass m. If I pull this mass m in that direction, um, there is going to be a force applied on this mass due to the spring system. And if we denote that uh, force by F, which is going to be equal to the uh, expressed by the Newton's law, F is equal to MA. So let's assume that it is stretched by this amount, which is X in that direction, the position of uh, the mass M. By the way, the, there is no friction, mu is equal to zero in this example. And uh, if I stretch the springs by uh, a total amount of x, this spring is going to be stretched by x1, and that spring is going to be stretched by x2. So the total displacement is going to be x1 plus x2. And uh, note that the force applied on this mass is going to be to the opposite direction of the displacement. So we, we need to put a, a minus sign in front of the total displacement. So in that case, the force is going to be uh, coming from this spring, let's say k2 times x2, displacement here is x2, x1, must be equal to m times a. But no, also note that this spring is connected to that. If the tension, let's call this tension, uh, or the force applied on this mass is F, then the force applied by this spring must also be F. So we should also note that the magnitude of these forces must be the same, K2, X2. So, that also indicates that k1, x1 is equal to ma. And uh, one more information before we start to solve this system. As indicated here, total displacement is x, which is equal to x1 plus x2. And the acceleration is x double dot. Okay. That is the magnitude of the acceleration. OK, so let's start with this system, uh, this equation. Negative k1 x1 is equal to m times a. I would like to find the frequency of the oscillation of this system. I expect that it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the whole system can be expressed. Uh, by a single effective spring, spring of some kind. In order to solve this algebra, of course, we solved this many times before. The usual, one of the usual tricks is multiplying this left-hand side by, uh, by unity. But we choose that unity carefully. Uh, this is one of the choices. K1 plus K2 divided by K1 plus K2 is it's a unity. So we have two terms here. Let me put this minus sign to the right-hand side. Uh, the first term is going, there is, this is k1. The first term is, going, is equal to k1, x1, k2. So let me write this, k1, k2, divided by k1 plus k2, x1, plus the second term is k1, x1, k1, divided by k1 plus k2. But instead of k1 x1, it is also equal to, as we noted here, that is equal to uh, k2 x2. So for the second term, which is the multiplication of these three numbers, I can write k1 k2 x2. So it's going to be k1 k2 k2 
plus k2 x2 is equal to ma. Of course, we do not forget our minus sign here, which is there. Okay, then note that the beauty of this term, uh, this expression is this multiplier as a whole is same as this multiplier. So that was the whole purpose. Okay. So that is k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2 x1 plus x2 is equal to negative m x double that. And note that this is equal to x. And let me define this term, it's a definition, as the effective spring constant, k. Then uh, this equation is going to be expressed by simply x double dot is equal to negative k divided by m multiplied by x. It's a second order differential equation. Take the derivative of uh, a quantity twice. So it's a constant, which is a negative constant, uh, times itself. And uh, we have two uh, solutions for this differential equation. One of the solution is x of t is equal to a sine omega t. Okay. Take the derivative once, it's going to introduce an extra omega. Take the derivative one more time, it's going to, and it's going to be cosine. Take the derivative one more time, it's going to introduce a negative sine or times omega. So basically, as a whole, taking derivative twice is going to introduce you omega square. Yeah, let's do so. Of t is equal to negative omega square a sine omega t. So which is equal to x of t. So this omega square is equal to k divided by n. So omega is equal to square root of k divided by n. So that is the first solution. Similarly, there's one more solution, which is the cosine solution. x of t is equal to, this is a constant amplitude. It represents how, how much I pull this uh, mass to the right initially. I pull this by an amount of a, re release it, it's going to oscillate with, uh, with the amplitude of a. Okay. The second solution, this time I'm going to choose my amplitude to be b, just to be uh, unique for that solution. Cosine omega t is equally a nice solution for the same differential equation. So this is a solution, this is another solution with the same omega. As a whole, x of t can also be the linear combination of these two solutions. In that case, it is a sine omega t plus b cosine Omega t. You can check if this is a solution or not by taking the derivative of this equation, this expression twice. You, the thing that you are going to see is there's going to be an extra negative omega square in front of the uh, whole expression, which is satisfying this differential equation. A and B are defined by the initial conditions, and omega is this, where k is the effective spring constant, 1 over k, which can also be expressed as 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. Okay. So that is what happens when you connect the springs in serial. When you connect the springs in serial, it behaves like a single spring with a spring constant evaluated by that ex expression. And this is the solution for the system for the position. A and B are expressed by the initial conditions. You can express the same solution using the trigonometric uh, relations. A sine omega t plus a phase uh, is equally equivalent solution for the same problem. But, but also note that this A doesn't have to be the same as this A. So you can express this as like A prime or C. 
And again, A prime and phi can be can be found using the initial condition. How much how much you uh, pull the system, and what is the initial speed at that point? That's the end of the problem. Okay, the second part of this problem uh, is uh, going to analyze the system where the springs are connected in parallel. Uh, but effectively in parallel. In this problem, let's assume that we have, a, we have a system where we have a mass and a frictionless surface. And we have a spring which is attached to the left-hand side of the mass, and another spring which is attached to the right-hand side of the mass. If we displace, and this is currently, it is in equilibrium, if I displace this mass to one direction by a certain amount, say, uh, to here, such that this is equal to x, what's going to be, and release it, what's going, what going to be the oscillation of the uh, frequency of the oscillation? In order to analyze, let's quickly uh, draw the free body diagram. There's going to be, of course, mg n, but there is, since there is no friction, it won't change anything. Nevertheless, let's just to be complete, let's show the those uh, forces. Pull the system in that direction, mass in that direction. Spring, uh, spring number one is going to pull it back to the left hand side. So this force is F1, which is the magnitude is equal to K1 X1. The magnitude is K1 X1, uh, sorry, K1 X. Uh, however, it is to the left, so if I choose my x direction, x axis like that, it's going to be, the x component is going to be negative x1, and so negative k1x. The force due to the second spring, I pull the system there, so I compress the spring, the spring is going to push it back, so it's going to be in that direction, push, it pushes the uh, mass back, so the direction is going to be in that direction. And the magnitude is going to be K2x. So that's the free body diagram. This is my coordinate axis. Let me uh, write down the equation of motion in the x direction. Okay. The contribution coming from this uh, spring is going to be to the negative direction, K1x. The contribution coming from this force is going to be negative K2x is equal to m times a, um, m times a, where a is the uh, second time derivative of the displacement, which is x. So we are almost done. Uh, negative k1 plus k2 times x is equal to m x double dot. If I define this quantity to be the effective mass constant, I'm sorry, spin constant k, then uh, x double dot can be expressed as negative k divided by m uh, x. And we know the solution for that equation from the previous part. In that case, we can immediately say that the general solution of such a system is going to be a sine omega t plus b cosine omega t, where omega is defined to be the square root of this quantity. We analyzed this from the previous part, which is k divided by m, and where the effective spring constant is simply k1 plus k2. That is the general solution. You can also write the same equation. Let's call this a prime or c sine omega t plus a phase if you use the trigon trigonometric relations. So that's the end of the question uh, problem. Uh, in summary, when we connect the springs in this formation, 
uh, the effect of spring constant can be found by simply adding the uh, spring constants of each spring. Before we continue, I'm going to change the problem slightly. Here is the system. This time I will really connect the springs in parallel of the same length, same uh, spring length, natural length of the springs. This is M. Now if I displace the mass by an amount of x, what is the, this question is the same, what is the frequency of the oscillation? If you draw the uh, free body diagram, I'm skipping the vertical components. I pulled the mass in that direction. The springs are going to uh, pull it back to the left. In that case, these are the forces due to two springs. X and the acceleration is going to be in, uh, in along the x direction can be found using the equation of motion. In that case, uh, negative k1 x plus neg negative k2 x is going to be equal to m x double dot. Note that this equation is exactly the same exactly this equation, same as that equation. So the uh, solution for that system is going to be exactly this solution. So basically, connecting the springs in parallel like that is equivalent to connecting the springs into these two separate walls. Those are algebraically the same problem. However, physically, they are slightly different. So that's the end of this part. Thank you.